We arrived at the freshwater train station nice and early amidst a morning shower. We were hoping that this was not going to be the trend all day as it would restrict the visibility of what we had been told is no less than breathtaking. First thing was to pick up our tickets that we'd booked as soon as we arrived in Cairns. This was at the suggestion of the guys at the caravan park due to the decrease in numbers allowed on the train. Next was some breakfast and a cuppa to get us started. After brekkie, we took some time to have a look around the station and start to get an understanding of the history of what is now an amazing tourist attraction. But alas, this has not always been the case. The first thing was to get it built, and construction of the railway began in 1886 and was completed as far as Karanda in 1891, and the passenger service began operations on the 25th of June that year. Photos and artefacts throughout the station show and tell the story of the early years. It's not looking too bloody flash up on that hill. With the train arriving, we make our way to our allocated carriage, number 12, and find our designated seats.
little bit of luck. A little bit of luck. There's the bridge. A little bit of luck. After your carriage crosses the bridge, look back and you may be able to obtain another great photo of the falls. In 1890, then Governor of Queensland, Sir Henry Norman, visited the site and a banquet was held in the Stretch the legs, Mel. As we pulled into Karanda Station, we had travelled through the McAllister Range and over the Great Dividing Range. Travelling 37 kilometres through 15 handmade tunnels and over 37 bridges rising to 328 metres above sea level. All this in the space of 1 hour and 55 minutes, which included the stop at Barron Falls. So the first stop off the train was to head to the butterfly sanctuary and I don't know, it's something about butterflies and, and fish, you know we've got a, the um, aquarium at home with the fish you can sit there and they're just quite, I think it's quite calming and um, funnily enough butterflies I, seem, I think are the same.
you've just had such a great time in at the butterfly. Well, we boarded the carriage for the return trip to Cairns. But for this one, we would be in carriage 15, right behind the engine. No biggie, we thought. But before we could get settled into our seats, one of the staff asked us if we'd like to relocate to another one, as it was all but empty. We accepted the invitation, but on the way he saw the cameras and said, have I got a spot for you? Images adorn the carriages of days long gone. We ended up in an older carriage that had a veranda and we were allowed to stand here for the journey home. Oh my god. Exciting as well as a bit spooky because I'm not a great one for heights and there were a few bridges to cross. We're just standing on the uh, on the porch veranda, I should say, of the um, one of the oldest carriages that they use in the on this train line. This is uh, all cast, all the uh, all the framework, all the framework's all cast on. Uh, 1913, this thing was made. So um, it's pushing a bit of age now, but geez, they do, they do a great job. It's so well looked after. Just about to enter tunnel 15. This is the longest tunnel the longest tunnel that they, uh, that they had to dig. Tunnel 15 is the longest of the tunnels on the line, 429 metres, and by far was the most difficult to build. The construction of the tunnel took over two years and was delayed when seven workers were injured during a cave-in. Gangs of men tunnelled in from the mountain face and worked on digging sections of the main tunnel. Without modern survey equipment, it was a remarkable achievement to join all eight tunnel faces. We have a short stop at the Barren Falls. Until 1958, these falls were a raging torrent as water spilled over the falls and fell some 265 metres into the Barren River. Since the construction of the Tinaroo Dam, the water has been contained and used for irrigation purposes in the Atherton Tablelands. Hopefully you can see the sky trains sneaking across the canopy. And that's why we were on the train. They were moving around too much for me. to say 
bridge that we're going to cross. Oh yeah, I can see the front. Look at that. So we're just heading over the Stony Creek Bridge. Tide has been on the um, on the range with an 80 metre circumference. The can to your left, and it's a magnificent, this magnificent, this magnificent waterfall here on the right hand side. That is pretty special. Oh my god. Stony Creek Station has the only passing loop on the range. This is where it was possible for two trains to pass. In the early days of steam, it was also an important stop to take on water, allowing it to complete its final descent into Cairns. John stayed in that position for the entire trip across that bridge, which was magic for him. Because he's got white <laughs> knuckles, because he's not he doesn't like heights um, and he did well because he wanted to get this footage just for you guys. Um, it's an amazing bit of footage and amazing scenery so if you're ever up this way, come and do it. It is definitely worth doing. As the sun starts to set and we start to make our way closer to Cairns, our tourist hats come on. What to do next? So our plan was hatched to head into town and check out the iconic Cairns markets. So once we arrive back, we'll check the map and head it into town. These a little disappointing this time around. There are a lot of stalls that were not open, which is sad, I guess. The lack of tourist numbers are truly evident. We'll back to camp, charge up the batteries, both camera and human, and prepare for tomorrow. In the next episode of our Brisbane to Cairns, we meet some of the friendly locals. Kevin the koala was taking a nap. Tawny Frogmouth was in a trance. Colin the cassowary was trying to hide in the shade. We got an invite to lunch, kinda, and the kookaburra thought it was all a bloody joke. 